Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So guys, I had done a video about this uh, about two and a half years ago, or one of the first ones I did, and I was just looking and, and it wasn't even really functioning on the channel anymore. So it's time to do it again, especially when I saw a comment by somebody that said that they didn't think that the previous video I did about the 13 families was my best work and didn't think it was very credible, especially the part about Pope John Paul being a salesman for IG Farben, which has Nazi ties. Well, wow, you know, hey, they <laughs> supplied the gas chamber gas uh, for the Nazis. So right here, you know, we're not only going to look at that, but we're going to look at a lot of other things here really quick. Just give you guys a quick view. Um, and this is all about the Bush ties to IG Farben. The Bushes family had the, well, they made a lot of money in World War II. They made a lot of money and, and directly tied into uh, the Nazis and the war effort. And, you know, it, it's just so deep. The, the connections between the politics and the religion and the death machine is tremendously huge, completely intertwined. As you see here, according to the former U.S. Justice Department, Nazi war crimes prosecutor John Loftus, who at the time of this was the director of the Florida Holocaust Museum, the Bush family fortune came from the Third Reich. That simple. Along with the Rockefellers, you know, Standard Oil, Chase Manhattan Bank, the Mellons, who actually I worked for that family, uh, Gulf Oil, Alcoa Aluminum, the DuPonts, and the For Henry Ford as well. So talking about this, this video will be demonetized, and they are going to bury this one deep. So get a look at it while you can. The salesman and a chemist who became Pope, John Paul II. Yes, he was. I got the links for you guys. They're always right there. In, in you know in the body so you could go and look it up for yourself but yeah pope john paul ii worked for ig farben which sold cyanide gas to the nazis to be used in auschwitz and in the other concentration camps so we've all seen the presidents do this right is it a cool hip thing to do what are they doing oh hey he's got moses's horns Look at that. Obama's got Moses' horns, and he's talking to a cardinal there, I think. Interesting. Yeah, even Ronnie did it. Uh, you know she did it. Not many people love her. Oh, say it ain't so. Yep. Yeah. And look at this. Oh, that's just fiddling with my thumbs, or am I sending a message to my secret fraternity? So, what the hell is that? A Yale? What's a Yale? interesting creature isn't it, it looks kind of like some sort of strange hybrid hey wow that looks like a crest of some sort and there's two of them two yales look at that it's a centicore it's a mythical beast isn't not interesting and so a yale is really comes from the hebrew ya el uh, so we, we're seeing the tracing of this Hebrew lineage uh, that goes back and, oh, look at this. The Yale is one of the queen's beasts. Interesting, isn't it? Well, it's, it's a heraldic beast, and it's used by the British royal family. Interesting, the horns, you know. Uh, hmm, yeah, horns. We were talking about horns today, weren't we? This is really curious stuff. All these things are so intertwined in. How, how? How? What is this? What are they doing? The British Royal Family Crest. Interesting. Hmm. Well, we've talked about the Royal Family. We've talked about the bloodlines. We've talked about how David Icke is not so crazy after all. And Yale University. Hey, that's Hebrew. What's that on their crest? Hmm. Lux a et veritas. So that's light and truth. Interesting. What truth? Yale's a really interesting, interesting university. And I lived about 10 miles from it for a long time and used to go in that area all the time and would go right by this place, the Skull and Bones area. Skull and Bones, 322. What's this all about? Well, you guys don't know. Skull and Bones is a, a private club, so to speak. And it has very, very affluent members that have gone to Yale. 
And so, you know, I have one family member that went to Yale actually with President Bush the second and uh, knew him actually. And so it's interesting. It's interesting. 322, Skull and Bones, 322, some sort of private club. Interesting. Genesis 322 says, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing both good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever like us. Us. Who's that talking? Well, that's God talking, but talking in the plural. Well, of course, the original you know, interpretation is the gods, as we've seen. We're talking about the Anunnaki. And so they just basically revised it to make it a singular God to basically get everybody confused and try to blur the picture a little bit. So we see here's George W., member of the Skull and Bones and Geronimo's skull, which they keep as a souvenir. Why do you think they keep the souvenir of a famous Native American leader, you know, there and do their ceremonies there? And here you see the Skull and Bones with 322 again talking about you know, hey, we can't have them be like us. Man, humankind cannot become like the gods. And we see two famous skull and bonesmen here, John Kerry, Democrat, George Bush, Republican. Doesn't matter. They're on the same team, guys. Don't buy the lies. And we see Prescott Bush and we see Pappy Bush and, of course, George. And, <laughs> and also we see going even farther back. The Bush family legacy is a long one. It's a long one, and uh, it is tied. These three are all bonesmen. Interesting, is it not? The skull, by coincidence, has 22 bones. Interesting as well. Uh, and then also there's the trinity. Three is the number of divinity and the trinity as well. 322, and then also a reference to Genesis. 322. So having the knowledge of good and evil, we can't let them bite of the tree of life and live forever know the secrets just like us interestingly enough too we have a 33rd degree right in freemasonry and we have 33 vertebrae in the spine and isn't it so interesting that people that are of fundamentalist mindset are terrified of kundalini because it's serpents and you've been taught to be terrified of serpents when this represents the Ida and the Pingala, these are the energy circuits that run up the body, the masculine and the feminine. And they've stressed the masculine energy in order to create disharmony in our world and create disharmony in our minds and our bodies and our souls as well. And in doing so, they inhibit the flow of the Kundalini, which would make us like them. It illuminates the all-seeing eye, the eye that we see over the pyramid, which is the third eye. And once the third eye is awakened, we can see their BS clearly. And Thoth uh, here holding the Ankh, which is life. And Thoth uh, is also Mercury and Hermes, Quasicodal, perhaps Ningashida as well, and perhaps even equated uh, over to Ganesh in, in the uh, Hindu pantheon as well, holding the key to this ancient knowledge, which you're taught to be fearful of. In a, in a fundamentalist mindset. And of course, because that's how they control you. And the seven chakras, which you're taught to fear your chakras as well. Well, there's no such thing as chakras. Yes, there is. There are chakras and they're the key to the energy flow up through the spine. Once they're opened and the energy flows equally between the masculine and the feminine, illuminating the third eye, then we become like them. And we could see and recognize our multidimensionality that we can actually operate on more than one level, that we have the ability to control our reality. And this is, again, referencing how different types of yoga and pranayama is breath work, and it can awaken, awaken the kundalini powers, and it will. And once your kundalini is awakened, you can no longer buy the BS. You can't be held in that cage. Coincidentally, you know, the Human Genome Project found that our second chromosome is fused. And somebody fused our chromosome. That doesn't happen naturally. Interesting. You know, there, there are legends of, well, take the Bible. Methuselah lived 969 years. The Sumerian kings lists have people ruling for tens of thousands of years. Some of them are supposedly demigods. You know, those are 
beings that are part them and part human. And of course, uh, if their legends are true, then, then we are also most definitely carrying their DNA. So we have evidence of DNA manipulation in us right now with our fused second chromosome. Very interesting as well. So Genesis 6.3, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever. They're mortal. They were just created to work the land. Their days will be 120 years. That's it. I'm going to just basically nip it in the bud. I'm going to get them to be afraid of Kundalini, afraid of the serpent, afraid of initiating their true sight in their third eye. Uh, in the modern days, I'm going to make sure it's fluoridated water, just like the Nazis used in the concentration camps to dumb them down and to calcify their pineal gland. I'm also just going to get them afraid of everything that they, you know, might find leads them to the truth. So, you know, burn the witch. Uh, be afraid of the serpent. He, it's evil. And uh, just behave and get down on your knees and worship the gods. Worship the Anunnaki. Worship the Ajiji. So, you know, is this the time period when the DNA fusion happened as far as the second chromosome? Interesting. Just a thought. As you see here, behold, the man is, has become as one of us. And again, isn't that odd that God's speaking in the plural? If it is truly one God, the creator of everything, how could he possibly speak in the, the plural? Oh, well, he's just referring to himself as, as the Holy Trinity. So he's talking to the Holy Spirit, and he's talking to Jesus that didn't incarnate yet. Yeah, okay, yeah. So anyway, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and also take of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Can't have that. And that's why they guard this 322 so well, because they know the truth. And this is the actual logo of the Skull and Bones Society, complete with the number 322. So what do you make of that, guys? As always, like, share, subscribe. Thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Keep searching for the truth. God bless and namaste.